Welcome back to the Iron Maiden of series that is Persona 5. <laughs> Boy, this one has already started out pretty rough and we, we you know, haven't even gone past this first scene. <laughs> Take three. Take three, baby. But at this point in time, you'd think that it's just like we wouldn't even care that much and we just keep rolling at, at, at episode 75. Nope. I still have a commitment to a certain level of quality, even though I do think that this series is going to go down in history as that uh, weird thing that a guy spent hundreds to literally thousands of hours doing. Yeah, en route to something, you know, en route to a beautiful, better, you know, life. You know, th this is just a gateway. This is just, why did you spend so many years on this when you could have just done, you know, that project that you and see in the dream? Anything else. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, is any project really not worthwhile? Like yeah. it, everything is an experience unto itself, right? This 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 series is not worth it. We're just doing it to satisfy your compulsion to finish everything that you start, and then my compulsion yeah. to help people achieve their goals, even if the goals are maladaptive. <laughs> even if the goals are self-destructive. <laughs> Look, man, I started it. I'm going to finish it. Look, we're going to finish the fight like Halo 3 never did. <laughs> By the way, I think it's like Halo 5 out at this point in time. I could look yeah. that up, I feel like. It. Yeah. We could just go talk about that like we did with Iron Maidens for 10 minutes. <laughs> no! It, was, it wasn't no. that long. I mean, it was, we, we got onto a tangent. We were like, because I was like, oh yeah, you were saying, like, what if it becomes popular? And I'm like, well, I the big thing is that we would sell out, of course. That would be the big thing. And we would and still sell out. I was out. trying to combine... And you would you know, get my, my Iron Maiden branded razor machines that shaves off all your body yeah. hair. And to be clear, I was trying to. I combine. told you we were just gonna fall right back into it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, damn. Okay, so uh, anyway, what's going on in this episode? No, nothing interesting, of course. No. Uh, uh, well, anyway, we're we're following up on this whole thing. Boy, Haru, like, God, Morgana and Haru it really seemed like they were accomplishing something, and now it's just like they're not. They apparently did. It's like the writers. It's like a metaphor. Like the writers had a good idea. And it had to be stopped out by this system. It's like, uh, I, I don't know if you've seen The Wire, but The Wire, like, that's the whole theme of The Wire. Is that individuals depart from the logic of the system, and they're eventually killed for it, over and over. I mean, it's like I mean, they're, Moru... They're killed Moru, once. Ma Haru? <laughs> Holy Christ. <laughs> Morgana and Haru. <laughs> mm -hmm. Moru, as I like to call them, um, <laughs> are... Uh, Dude, that just totally derailed, derailed my whole train of thought. Okay, well, move on to the next thing. We're just... We're, we're, I have that brain poison, too, where I think of, like, some wordplay or something, and it's like, I can't move on from it. I just have to, no, like, No, it's not even supposed out. to be wordplay. I just said the wrong thing. Okay. Fair enough. Well, a lot of wordplay is just fucking up, you know? I mean, it's true. It, it works out well for... As somebody who talks a lot. Yeah. Sometimes your mistakes into miracles, like that one image of Sonic the Hedgehog being pregnant with Rainbow Dash. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> you just you just mm -hmm that without even <laughs> registering what I said. I was, I was kind of re <laughs> you said Sonic the Hedgehog was pregnant with Rainbow Dash, and I'm vaguely familiar with what that might mean, but oh, I don't. You are. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what the image is. I just I know that that's one of the oh, little just, ponies. Just go, just go, just go uh, type into Google "mistakes and the miracles." In fact, I could do it right now if I felt like <laughs> it. But I don't really want to derail the episode. Ah, it's already it's gone. It's it's dead. It's dead. This this whatever. Series, this is episode seventy five. Nobody's watching this. I mean, you know, it's one of those things where it's like the problem with Persona is that they're too focused on like you know doing the their song. plot, their chat, their plot check boxes and stuff. They're, it's cynical writing. It's just deeply cynical writing. They're trying to accomplish something at any given point. They're not like, why do we care? We, I don't care what's going on right now at all. I, I actually think that the Morgana storyline has been good, but it's just like, let's be honest, the entire gameplay and service of it is now just going down a big, like, plus-shaped road right now. Well, well, it's it's a good... I mean, I'm glad that they're introducing some uncertainty, but we know what's going to happen. It's just going to resolve in aimlessly. It's going to be, well, and they, they got along again, and some, then some they're back bad, to Some bad uh, uh, one-dimensional villain's going to come along, and they're going to unite against them because it's convenient and <laughs> suits yeah. their personal uh, personal interests. Yeah, yeah. It's just actions don't really hey, have guess what happens in this episode? <laughs> The, 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 the only relationships that have consequences are specifically the social links because those are 
those actually have implications for the gameplay, and that's the only way they know how to encode relationships mattering. It's just, it's deeply cynical. But our problem is that we just can't, oh my god, is are we only four minutes into this episode? Are we, we are only, we're god. five minutes in. Okay, oh, okay. Oh, we have 30 left because this is this is a, a longer one compared to most of the per Sundays that we've been doing as of late. And we are doing one a week now, I, apparently. You're going to keep that up? For... Oh, I kept it up for three weeks now. I don't see any reason to stop. Although okay. I do need to actually catch up on like some of the transcripting stuff. Yeah. That's, that's more fair. because I've been lazy during the week, though. In fact, a lot of these episodes have been largely created between Friday and Saturday. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Well, there you go. I that's... might be... Um, uh, working a little bit too diligently to get these things out, but I want to stick to a schedule. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I want to be done with this game. And we don't want to be done with this. Like, I look, mean, this is the only way that we're going to get done with this by the end of 2021, because for God's sake. I said, oh, I remember somebody saying in a stream at one point in time, it's just like, hey, man, uh, I don't really want to watch Persona episodes until you're done with the entire series. And I'm like, I'll see you in 2021. <laughs> and here we are. If you're lucky, you know, like. Uh, that was in like 2019 that I said that. <laughs> you know, it's funny because like, I, I think I made a joke about 10 episodes ago about there being 20 episodes left. And it just feels like we've made almost no progress since then. I, like, it's weird we went to the palace last time and it feels like we're just like we've actually like made less like it felt like morgana and haru were moru were doing doing stuff and then they're not oh hey look at this guy uh -huh. i love that it's just like in literally the first line and the first thing he does it's just like wow you think this is guy is you think this guy is a is a villain yeah i'm, I'm starting to think he is Anyway, um, it's just, it's, it's like, God, this is a game that's supposed to be about exploring the innermost desires and thoughts of, of, of villainous people. That is literally what, like, the whole premise behind uh -huh. all the palaces are, and they all suck so fucking bad. Mm -hmm. They're all so nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, anyway, um... Yeah, he, this guy was described as being a son of a politician, so I guess he's the son of Shido. Uh -huh. yep, that's that's, uh, that was a, that was a one-off line that uh, Okamura gave in the last episode, so it does mean that he is, of course, going to be intricately intertwined with yeah. the entire and plot not, line as a whole. And now that you mentioned it, his facial structure is clearly like similar to Shido's. Yeah, so. he's, 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 he's got that look. He's got that chin. He's got the look. Oh, that's going like, bad. Man, isn't it such a coincidence that that uh, Haru would just out of nowhere decide to follow Morgana and get a persona and everything, and also she happens to be the fiance of Shida son every single time? Uh -huh. <laughs> like, and it, God. Dude, and it, we, we said last time, it's just like, yeah, there's like a hundred people that live in Tokyo. And, and I, I, I love her squirrel. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's a normal thing. Yeah, they're definitely holding each other, like... What the f- Yeah. Even the characters. Like, yeah, but like, I just. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I realize that's a villainous thing that he's saying. And don't get me wrong. Like, I mean, <laughs> it's just like, they, they have to make him comically evil. They can't just make him like, um, kind of a scumbag. He has to be a scumbag to her. Do you know what I mean? Like, you can't just be a scumbag to her in a way that's less you know so, that's subtler where right. he's, he's he's a politician son he knows how to manipulate people he knows how to prevent people from saying no and stuff no he's just a like you know he's no he just runs out there and then and, and uh grabs her and he's just like yeah hey, why don't we have fun hey Lubizio. yeah it, it is disturbing how quickly you went into that scumbag voice i mean what do you mean? It's, uh, that, yeah. That's not my normal voice. I mean, I, I could do that as well. It's not, it's not, I guess it's not that hard. You just gotta compress your voice a little bit. Yeah, this is how it's gonna be the uh, last of the episode now. Yeah, you can compress your vocal cords and go way <laughs> low. <laughs> you, you really sound cords. like a scumbag. Yeah, squeeze them like you squeeze that bag of scum you constantly carry around. That's actually what we call a vocal uh, What's up? What's up? Anyway, so I guess we found out now who Haru's fiance is. He's By the way, what was his name? 
He's a real piece of shit. His name is Haru's fiance. That's right. And for the rest of the episode, we're going to know him as Haru's fiance. <laughs> yeah, but you... He's not actually getting a name. I mean, he's Shido's son, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I guess it'd be uh, like a little bit of a, a little bit of a spoiler to say that, even uh, though it's very obvious. It, it's very obvious. They, they're, not, they're not even trying. No, they're not even trying to this point in time. It's yeah. a really uh, emblematic thing of the series as well. It's such an empty <coughs> husk, just like me. It's I'm an empty world. husk inside. Empty That's why I, I gamble everything I earn that I don't drink away. Uh, yeah. My daughter. She hates it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My daughter. Yeah, your daughter's hot. What is she, like, 25? Oh, dude, you're talking about my daughters here. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were trying to do this comeback character. Yeah, oh. yeah, I feel like there's a certain extent where well, we are talking about Persona 5. That might, that might have been a violation of your boundaries. I'm sorry, we're just doing this in character. Hey, I, I, I understand. I understand. This is okay. Gumbags myself. I, I, I can see exactly why you go there. Even though I feel like that as as a family member of mine, that you should have like a little bit more respect. Yeah, I, I'm, I really apologize. I, I was just doing the character thing. I, I deeply apologize to you and your family. I am so sorry. Yes, thank you. But of course, I will be forgiving you because you are invited to the wedding, which will be happening on... <coughs> I'm losing the voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, I've got some like slowly. Losing the juice that makes that voice work. I don't even know. Also, I was going into like mob boss territory. What's yeah, yeah, you were you're definitely. That was definitely like a Godfather reference. Yeah, that was like. A... I mean, it's just it's just that voice is very very well suited for saying Dwada. <laughs> Dwada. Yeah, yeah. You, you can kind of have the phlegm in the back of your throat. There's like a reserve of phlegm. I know what you're talking about. Now. Any... <laughs> I was really set to do that for the rest of the episode, too. Yeah, yeah, no, I, it is like, hard to do we that. We do have, right? like, 20 minutes left. Oh, my God. How are we... minutes left. Uh, this episode never ends. <laughs> we'll be... Ah, no. We'll... Our episode's going to last forever. Well, blunders never cease. duty is what I like to call it. <laughs> it's ironic that a game that's named Persona would be so impersonal. <laughs> <laughs> Truly, this is the greatest irony of our time. <laughs> uh, we, we are definitely losing it. This is not as crisp as oh, yeah. we started. <laughs> no, I mean, this is take three, man. We're not going back yet. <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah, it's getting harder and harder and harder and harder to breathe. Uh, I'm just going into song references now. Yeah, uh, was that from uh, that? We've hit the threshold. What was that? We hit the threshold. Okay, yeah, I was gonna say that that sounded like it's getting harder and harder to breathe. Is it from Sublime? That is. Okay. Yeah. Great. April twenty. Anybody out there? Cause it's getting harder and harder to. Yeah. Yeah. Was it? Mm -hmm. I gotta say, it's like I, I, I honestly do not remember any Sublime songs. I just, I mean, I probably like remember the song. I just do not remember that they are by Sublime. Yeah, that was one of those. Like, I think that was from that April. Well, like 20, 1992, there were riots on the street. Tell me, where were you? Riots on the streets of Chicago. Uh, nope, I got nothing. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's like I'm, I'm trying here, but... Yeah, you know, by the way, it is, like, really hot in here. I am literally sitting here without, like, a shirt or pants on. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're still terrible. We're definitely the Santana and Rob Thomas. Of this, uh, I, I you're gonna be Rob Thomas because I am sun. just incredibly hairy right now. I've got the kind of the Santana, just massive beard and massive hair. Really, that's weird because I'm like totally clean shaven. Right well, yeah, that, actually, that's why you'd be uh, Rob Thomas. Did an entire rundown yesterday, mm -hmm. so it's just like I. Hmm. Yeah, I went to the I went to the Iron Maiden filled with racers that I, I mentioned before. <laughs> is that have we established that in this tank? Is that going to be completely? <laughs> I think I think so. I think I, I think I mentioned it like really early on. And to be clear, the reason I was suggesting that is like a mattress shave crossover that we could sell out to both types of companies. Mattress and shave. Oh, oh yeah, because of the. the yeah. The, Oh, yeah, I, I didn't even make the connection of yeah. just like, oh, yeah, those are common podcast advertisers. Yeah, that, that's why I said that. And then you, you like, 
went on like this football helmet lined with razors that you could use to shave your face. And yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah, pretty old an outfit. That, that's pretty intriguing. Then we got into talking about the Iron Maiden. And it, does it exist? Maybe, but probably not. The, the Iron Maiden does not seem to have actually exist. Uh, okay, well, let's just do the entire bit again. <laughs> no, we, hey, I so think the Iron Maiden doesn't actually seem to exist. I checked on Wikipedia, blah, blah, blah. It says uh-huh. um, that it purported to exist. Wow, it, it would be a really uh, inconvenient way to actually torture somebody. Um, it would be more of a way to do an execution. Um, did we, and also how difficult would it be to clean? Okay, there, we covered it. Uh Uh-huh, yeah. (laughs) We speed ran that bit. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. I'm checking it. I I, I BLJ'd all the way through the bit in in less than seven seconds. Yeah, by the way, a good meme that has come out is like, uh, I don't know if you're, are you familiar with Giant Steps by John Coltrane? Yes. Okay. That's a good ass. That's a good ass song. Everybody only ever references the beginning of it, though. Yeah. Have you seen that's the memes? I have not. Though. Okay. Wait, there no, is... I, wait. 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 I saw. I uh. There's TikTok. Right. It might be a TikTok meme. Um. I'm thinking on YouTube. You can search like giant steps, but and you'll just find like hundreds of things where people are doing giant steps. Like they're adding the giant step changes to various songs. And it's really interesting. Um, and one of the better ones was like somebody doing a giant step speed run. And they're just like, you know, celebrating. How, yeah. I might actually have to go look this up because I, I, I'm i down with Coltrane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I genuinely really like everything about that. But, uh, yeah. uh, you know. Coltrane, also, my, um, Miles I, Davis. I, I just remembered that. Uh, one of the one of the, the the meme songs that they use on TikToks right now is Giant Steps with like some sort of lyrics to it. I don't know. I haven't actually listened to it, but I'm just like, what a weird choice. I guess uh, if it's because people are memeing on it, that would explain. Yeah, story. I gotta get on TikTok because I'm always seeing like it, it's weird because we're old enough where it would be weird to go on TikTok, but it's also like it, it seems like it's great that. like content, you know. Yeah, but at the same time, it's just like my exposure to TikTok is usually through watching anime girls reacting to them. So, oh my god, yeah, yeah, so yeah, you, shut up. You have, Look, I, I've been, I have not been, I, I've been deep into the VTuber rabbit hole for a while now. Well, I'm, I'm just saying. So, there's not like an extra shame for you to go on TikTok then. So that's actually good. <laughs> I have no shame. The shame has left my body long ago. <laughs> been replaced only by hatred for Persona 5. <laughs> Don't you remember? My entire blood. All my blood. <laughs> st- the blood is the way you carry the shame. <laughs> I this don't. This basic human biology. Okay, I I am not familiar with what you're talking about right now. I'm sorry, but uh. <laughs> okay, great. Anyway, um. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. No, I'm just saying words now. We're about halfway done with this episode. Just. just... <laughs> we are. Actually, we're not even halfway done with this episode. Holy Christ. <laughs> Holy Jesus We're just Christ. reaching the halfway point, like, right now, I think. Oh, my God. We just reached a halfway, happy halfway through the episode, everybody. <laughs> oh God. We've got so much uh, stuff to say. Is, it's going... Uh, it's... The, 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 the series is unraveling. You, you notice how, like, things are happening, but it's like we... It's so banal and obvious what they're doing that it's just not like oh he, she's meeting with her father and her father's displeased that she's not marrying that abusive brute that we saw yeah, so in she, the previous she's gonna scene. make okay. him her move in with wrong. him that's so, that's it that's the okay okay i had a bit i had a bit um let me launch right into that one right now mm-hmm. um <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> need to have my um bit throat clearing first mm-hmm. now then <clears throat> Oh, oh, still a little bit of, still a little bit of uh, bit flames left left in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was wondering exactly how we were going to uh, get you know the personal connection to actually go into the palace in the first place because that's been such a common thing before where it's like we never really do anything about this until it personally involves us, mm-hmm. and now Haru, it's just like is being forced to marry them because blah blah blah. It's, it's all it's it's all so in line and also very similar to like the Yusuke storyline. It's of course it had to be the exact same thing as always. 
Well, that's just kind of how it is. Also, Yusuke being a weird devil's advocate character, which again, considering that he has a very st similar storyline, <laughs> that it would that it's strange that he's trying to talk her out of it at this point in time. I mean, it's, it's a good point. It's actually something they should be talking about sometimes. Like, oh yeah, what happens if we do change Matarami's heart? Well, it'll completely, you know, it'll leave Yusuke without a home, essentially, right? Like, what is he, where is he living? He moved into the dorms at school. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's the entire thing, though, where it's just like, these, they, each one of the villains only has one person that is dependent on. Mm -hmm. Like, in any way, seemingly. It's very convenient. Uh, everything it's convenient and, and in not a way that feels person. really well written. Like it's always like, okay, this is the one person they're dependent on. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the one person they're dependent on is the person who also happens to be, uh, you know, intricately connected to the party at this point in time. Yeah. And also, just also, like, like, okay, so how? By the way, we've got a jealous fiance. And he finds out that his uh, bride... Abusively jealous. Yes, abusively jealous. Finds out that his bride suddenly has seven friends, three of whom are male. And has mm -hmm. met a cat. And we know that he's abusively jealous because he said he was. I mean, he basically, you know, but <laughs> said he was. And she's just able to continue meeting with them. I think that's a pretty big... Plot hole if we take these characters seriously at all, but we're not supposed to. Yeah, no, it's like uh, he, he just exists as a plot point. As as with every villain, they just exist as plot points more than actual characters. Mm -hmm. It's like to to take into account what like normal actions and everything that this these characters would do is pointless. Like here's like we, we're if, he, villains. if he's an abusive fiance. He's going to say, oh my god, my uh, bride-to-be is with all these guys and, you know, just and apparent friends that she's met from school. How can I control this situation? And how can I stop her from meeting with them? Like, and how can I get them well, basically it, out of her life? How can I get them arrested or whatever? And I, I know that's what, like... like and instead, what they're doing is, uh, did, well, I will wait 20 days first and then <laughs> yeah. force her to move in with me. Uh -huh. And I'm not saying it because I want this abuse or subplot, but it's like if you're going to do it, then you might as well do it. You might as well commit to it and not just have it's it given be, a lot like, of credit to the, to the writers that it's just yeah. like they would... Because it's just like, how how are they going to come up with a whole list of crimes okay. for uh, that new character to do rather than actual scenes? Yeah, and it's like, why not have like a nuanced villain? Why not have why not have uh, a, an issue where the the fiance is like subtly abusive and subtly controlling yes. and jealous? Like it's that like, seems to have actual, you know, like, at least on the surface, seems to, like, actually care about Haru rather than just being clearly, like, I am buying you, like, an item. Exactly. It just, it, it feels like there's no, there's no tension there. It's just, he's the villain. He's the villain. We gotta stop him. Or he's, uh, or his father is the villain. And why exactly is his father the villain, but not the fiance? By the way, just, uh, because you know, her father forced her into the situation in the first place. Right, there you go, whatever. Right, but I, it's just like it's, but aren't they both kind of the villain? Like, if the the fiance had his heart changed, would that be kind of the same thing? Like, uh, no, because Okamura does also have control over like the whole corporation, but it's also like it. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you, see, no. you see what I'm saying? It's not, I mean, the son is obviously powerful in his own right. Like, that's why he's being, you know. Uh, I, I guess it would probably get him too close to Shido. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they, it's sort of for, like... For the sake of the story, they have to... Uh, the main character has to have convenient amnesia and has to uh, make sure that Shido does not at all recognize him and has no no interaction between the two characters at all. Yeah, and it's like... The it's like, you know, he explicitly made sure that it's just like the whole court case or, well, the whole um, arrest and everything did not include his name at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all the, these sort of things. I mean, honestly, you know, going after Shido's son would be an interesting, like, if you were writing a good version of this, but, I mean, obviously, that would be way far gone from that. But if you were writing a decent version of this, you know, you could make Shido's son show all of his flaws and have him turn, and that be something that's sort of traumatic, that sends oh. Shido over the edge into 
forcing the final conflict kind of thing. It's like, you know what I mean? Just like, just that kind of a... Uh, I mean, I think that's literally what Romeo and Juliet, like, there's... That, that's yeah, the but the, I mean, the thing it's is, like, it's just like... Mercutio like, and Bedolio or whatever. Hey. Yeah, but then it's like it wouldn't be a self-contained story. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, exactly. It would mess up the process of writing I mean, it, it, it is episodically. It, it can be self-contained and have implications for further plot, but it cannot be, you know... I mean, it's just made-up rules. ...important by itself. Mm -hmm. It's not like fun made up rules like the Coyote and like the Roadrunner. Like they have all sorts of rules. Uh, I think who was it? Like Tex Avery had a bunch of rules, mm -hmm. and they're always funny. You know, like the Coyote can never catch the Roadrunner, or if the Coyote does catch the Roadrunner, it has to be something with the Roadrunner easily. Like, that kind of thing, you know, like or something like super goofy and dumb, like that time that the Coyote was um, two inches tall and he caught the Roadrunner. It's just like, well, <laughs> uh -huh. exactly. Yeah, but it's like, the, the made-up rules for this seem like they're based on, well, shall we, it almost... Convenience. Merchandising. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> not not quite, but somewhere in between plot convenience and merchandising. Because, I mean, we have to go towards... Very, uh... We have to create a party, and that's the most important thing. Like, the only reason she's wearing a hat, why is she wearing that hat? He's a gardener. Uh, it's Vitoya. Yes, I see what you're saying. <laughs> because you got to, do you remember the bit where it's just like, yeah, like um, the <laughs> merchandising has become a big part of the storyline. Hey, you, you know, I was just thinking about like, you remember there was that Aqua Teen Hunger Force, literally with that doll, that like that uh, hillbilly doll, and he has night fishing goggles, and mm -hmm. he's just getting the, the depressed doll, just says. What, what you know? What are you doing with that night vision goggles? What, what what does that serve? What, what what what's the point? You don't even know what you're what who you are. You and, don't and even he, know your identity. Yeah, exactly. And he's like, I, I don't know why I have these night vision goggles. But, no, I'm okay. I'm just real sad. Yeah. <laughs> um. And uh, what should we call it? Uh, Sakura. Or, I mean, sorry, Futaba actually has night vision goggles, and it's not. As arbitrary, because, I mean, she's a hacker, it kind of makes sense, but... <laughs> Speaking of really toyetic designs, <laughs> actually, I actually really like this. It's very I, Darth Vader. <laughs> yeah, it's like Darth Vader conceived of by the animators for Daft Punk. Yep. It might be actually more like a Captain Harlock thing. He's got that red and black design, and I know that, that, that's often, but I don't know enough about that series. Anyway, uh, Haru's fi fiance doesn't get anything. <laughs> is, is he in the palace, or is that just like a... He's got a big, like, black aura around him. Okay, fair enough. Like, evaporating off of him. Like, it would be, like, again, here's the thing. Like, it's like, why not just have it be like, okay, you know, you fight both of them or something. It's a special palace. Like, it's it, it mirrors the entrapments that people visit on women in this culture. You know, like, it's the father, it's the patriarchal father, and it's the abusive husband kind of thing. It's like, okay... Uh, and you could have them have like a twin design, like just from a merchandising standpoint, there's an argument for this, but it's like, it would just interfere with their stupid made up rules about writing, so. Well, at least nope. we do get some, we still do get some pretty stellar designs. I, love I mean, the even though it's just like, yeah, everything is very arbitrary. Why does, uh, Ryuji look like, um, some sort of Mad Max with an ascot? <laughs> Yeah. But, like, you know, at least it's a good design. I, mean, I still appreciate the fact that they do, for each one of the villains, uh, make them just the most absurd buffoonery possible, even though they're supposed to be taken entirely seriously. Yeah, I love the villain design. It's another highlight of the game. It really is. Like, the, the way that they make them... the, the, the When you fight them, but just when they're, they're characters, they're palaces that are built around their psychologies, I love that. I think they do a great job with it. It's like, the, the, the psychology is just so threadbare. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a game that's supposed to be about this, and it's like... Ah, ah. It, it's more like their their flaws conceived in some weird expressionist, like, <laughs> you know, palace. I, I mean, I, I like what they do with the palaces, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, it's it's uh, more interesting than the characters themselves. Mm -hmm. Who, who is your father, Haru's fiance? <laughs> yeah, like, look at this. He still gets this no thumb. name. He gets no name throughout this. He's like the Japanese literally translates to Haru's fiance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Do we know what Shido's last name is? Uh, probably. I don't remember. Okay. okay. It okay. might be Shido, and the, uh -huh. you know, it's, you know. Yeah. Like, I, it's, it probably is, but like, I don't know. Yeah, who cares? It's like, yeah, it, it doesn't matter. We're technically not even supposed to, like, know about him yet. Uh -huh. It's just, you know, Persona 5. Mm -hmm. and I, yeah, we get it. Yeah, it's like, okay. <laughs> yes, we get it. For yeah. God's sake, we get it. <laughs> Uh, this is uh, the leftmost. Coupling. Like I got it in the last episode. Yeah, Barkley, we need to detach the the oh, sorry, the rightmost coupling. Is this the rightmost, rightmost coupling? Yes. Oh, hey, now he gets a design. Why don't he show up like this? Oh, because we wouldn't recognize him. <laughs> because we're stupid. Oh, so that's like the uh, that's the fiance now. That that's his form. He's like that's Haru fiance. Okay. That's Mr. Fiance himself. No, Haru's persona won't stand a chance against Haru's fiance's persona. <laughs> well, it's not Haru's fiance's shadow. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Technically not the same thing. <laughs> Reminds me a lot of uh, Dark Souls, where it's like, um, at the very end of Big Hat Logan's storyline, when you find him, he has stripped off all of his clothes because, you know, Dragons don't wear clothes. And he's trying to be like a dragon, mm -hmm. except for his big hat, because I guess the <laughs> developers assume that you wouldn't know who he was if he took off his big hat. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. It's just like, oh come on, from Sob, don't. We're not that stupid. <laughs> I was say it's weird. Like I know we've uh, we've compared again. We're comparing it to a great work of of art of the last you know fifty years or something, and Dark Souls, but like. Honestly, if you look, if you just squint and look at the palace design and look at the, you know, all, all the creativity that goes into that stuff, I mean, it's not. <laughs> it's it, it, well, certainly this is a more complete game than Dark Souls, which does not have a second half, basically. Yeah, yeah. Like if they just, I want, guess that's good. If they had the slightest amount of subtlety, they could have done something where they told the story through uh, like props or something. You know, through items you find, but they're, they're not. I don't know. I don't know if that's actually a better idea. But. Like, but, like there's a lot that we could. You know, there's a lot that you could assume. <laughs> I think, just in general. Yeah. I mean. It's like, I don't really know what else. To, he's still called Haru's fiance. Yeah. Just it's like, oh, for God's sake, he's a he's a boss fight right now, and he's still called Haru's fiance. Also, like, I, I like that he's a son of a prominent politician, but it's never named. Like, he's never named. And I feel like they'd at least... Not yet, at least. Yeah. So this is the power of Haru. <laughs> yeah, she just gets a, another a persona that I'm probably not going to use and just end up Ryu using Ryuji instead. Uh -huh. Okay, let's go. Yeah. Also, why, again, that just hat, that hat bothers me because it actually is pretty cool. Like, her character design is cool, it's just so arbitrary. It doesn't make sense for what we know about her. I, well, what do we know about her? Exactly! We don't know much, but we, we know she's a goddamn gardener. That's what we know about her. And... That's the one, she, she was super into re recycling, uh, 40 episodes ago, too. <laughs> oh, they probably changed that in between. That that was a royal set. Okay. <laughs> How astute. Uh, just just guess that one right away. Exactly. Like, I just oh, there's I, no way that was in the base game though. Her having two character traits. <laughs> yeah. Like, and it's weird. You just assume that they they are doing everything wrong, and sometimes you're like pleasantly surprised, but usually you're just, it's like, oh no, it's even, it's exactly as disappointing oh, as you think. you're pleasantly oh, surprised. Even more. You just assume the absolute worst. Why don't you... When you're pleasantly surprised, it's like, well, I guess I'll give this one to them, just because they've done everything else so badly. <laughs> why is she, why is she drinking tea? What is that? She's fancy. Yeah. I mean, her persona's called Milady. Okay. And she did tip her hat earlier. Okay. I guess you can kind of all the gardening, but like, what is cycling? I don't know. She's fancy? I guess. Does she have one of those like French bicycles with the huge front wheels? 
Uh, a pe penny, penny. Penny farthing. Farthing? Is that, Is that what it's called? I don't know. I Maybe. Also, yeah, um, uh, as always, it's just like, <laughs> I don't worry, guys. I explained this before. Anyway, we didn't. <laughs> I didn't, apparently. So here it is again. Jesus Christ. <laughs> the, the, was there a point where they were considering just releasing this as five small episodes? Like for early access or something? or And like release it over the course of three years? No, it's been in development since like 2009. So... Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> I, I I bet what they did is they... This is around 2014. They realized this game is a disaster. We need to start from scratch using the assets we have. And it needs to be 100 hours long. I, I'm I'm kind of just guessing here. I don't know if that's true. Like, I haven't read anything about the development. Uh, I remember 2014 was when they first reduced, uh, released the um, uh, uh, gameplay trailer of it. Because I remember that at the time I was doing overnight work and I... And when I got off at 6 a.m., I uh, went and watched it on my phone. But it was just like, oh man, I'm so excited for this game. Look, they brought back demons. It was like demon negotiation and stuff again. <laughs> And did that make it yeah. into the game? <laughs> it did. Okay. <laughs> so for every, you know, five episodes or something, when we get one, oh, whatever, that's done. 